Hi everybody, Jeff Yastine here. As always, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow me on Twitter, at Jeff Yastine. Follow me on Facebook. The username is Jeff Yastine One. Now, years ago, I used to be a financial reporter. And in those days, I happened to interview Warren Buffett. It was the year 2000. It was in Omaha at his Berkshire Hathaway shareholders meeting. Now, tech stocks, you know, dot coms, were super popular at the time, and he was getting asked about them by all of us uh, media folks. And I'll always remember his response, which can be sort of summed up in these words, price paid, value received. Now, it doesn't matter what the stock is, you know, could be the safest, could be the riskiest. If you pay the right price for it, you have a much better potential to wring a lot of value out of the shares. In other words, you can make a lot of money. Buffett's words come to mind these days when I look out at one particular group of stocks, the stay at home companies. Now, in my time as an investor and speculator, you know, I see it again and again. One particular group of stocks gets super hot for good reason, and we all make tons of money. And then the sector goes cold, cold as a stone. And that's what's been happening over the past few months with these companies. And pick almost any of these stay-at-home stocks, whether it's Apple or Amazon or many other sort of lesser known ones, and chances are the shares are lower now than they were three or four weeks ago, and that's despite the rest of the market moving higher. So you're left to ponder, you know, I bought these great stocks. Uh, I'm told they're the best of the best in the industry, and after watching the broader market go, you know, straight up for days at a time, why aren't my stocks, the stay-at-home stocks, leading that market into the stratosphere. Well, it's a classic trap, in my opinion. In the same way that value investors get stuck in value traps, stocks that might appear to be good buys, you know, based on fundamentals, but really are not. And the bookend to that is what I'll call growth traps. And these are stocks in which the growth fundamentals uh, still make sense. You know, revenue is soaring ever higher. And if the company has profits, uh, it will probably beat Wall Street's profit estimates by a wide margin you know, when the next earnings release uh, comes out. So why isn't the stock going up anymore, you're going to ask. And the problem is that all that growth is already priced into the shares. Peloton, P-T-O-N, is a good example of that kind of stay-at-home stock. You know, the fundamentals are great. This is a company that has posted a lot of red ink in recent years, but with the pandemic, people have discovered the company, its great product and its great technology you know, behind it. And as sales have zoomed higher, the company is on track to post an annual loss of just two cents a share this year, rising to a projected you know, first ever annual profit of 28 cents a share next year and 79 cents a share in the year after that. So that, my friends, is phenomenal earnings growth. But you know, if you've only recently bought the stock, the question you need to ask is how much of that phenomenal earnings growth will I receive in the future for the stock price that I'm being asked to pay now? Now, there is no perfect way of measuring this sort of thing. All stocks have a speculative element, an element of risk. Uh, great stocks can get cheaper. Terrible stocks can go way, way up in price. And I'm not trying to say Peloton is a terrible stock. But that's just how the game works on Wall Street. But one way of measuring value in a stock is just with a, a basic price earnings ratio. I use it all the time because it's easy to explain. Uh, divide the stock price by its annual earnings per share. And if we do that for Peloton, based on its forecast profits for next year, we're being asked to pay a PE ratio of 357. So if we look at the growth between next year and 2022, uh, it's going to grow its earnings by around 280%. So a P.E. ratio of 350 really isn't that far off the mark. I mean, companies with fast growth have high P.E.s. Companies with slow growth have low P.E.s. But at this point, an investor buying Peloton is being asked to pay, in my opinion, based on this very basic formula, absolute top dollar in order to own the stock. And to paraphrase Warren Buffett then, you're paying a very high price at the moment and arguably not receiving much value in the way of that profit growth. Now, maybe I'm wrong and I've completely misjudged the growth from here for this company and it accelerates ever higher. And, you know, the enthusiasm uh, to own the shares for investors is continuous. It wouldn't be the first time I've been wrong. 
On the other hand, all investing is about assessing risk versus reward. So let me throw out a, a theoretical situation or partly theoretical. We're all gonna start receiving our COVID vaccines in coming months. Now, how many of us are really gonna to wanna to stay at home and pedal our high-tech exercise bikes all the time alone instead of going to the gym like we did before where we can socialize with our friends and our trainers and you know basically not be alone. Now that doesn't mean Peloton's business goes away or that's somehow a bad business because it's not. But maybe its revenue and profits just don't grow as fast as some might expect. Maybe some of Peloton's customers decide to get rid of their bikes and drop their subscription simply because they can't afford to pay both a gym membership that they want now and a Peloton subscription. Let's also keep in mind that Wall Street likes shiny new things. Uh, and as we move out of the pandemic, Peloton stock may not be such a cool stock to own anymore, simply for that reason. Quite often in these kinds of situations, smart traders slowly sell out of their shares. And you know they bought when it really was a great value back when the stock was trading at 30 a share in April. And by selling now, they basically tripled their money in seven months time, which isn't bad. But guess who's left holding the bag? New Peloton investors who bought a great story, but never bothered or just didn't know how to check on the most important equation out there, price paid, value received. Something to keep in mind here, just trying to sort of put that element out there. If you like what I'm talking about, Make sure to follow us on YouTube and follow me on Facebook and on Twitter. I'm Jeff Yastine.